What is up, everybody? It's November 23rd, 2022. Not in the Big Bear Lake area yet. We are in Yukaipa. Just a beautiful view. We're going to be driving up the mountain. And I thought I would show you guys what it looks like driving up right now, two weeks after the storm. All right. Hope you guys are having a great day. And uh, I will continue this video shortly. We'll just go right around this corner, though, so you can see how beautiful the mountains look. It's spectacular. What a beautiful, clear day. Look at that. That's just beautiful. Man. All right, you guys, take care. Once again, we are in Yukaipa, California, on our way to a street called Bryant, which will take us to Highway 38. We're going to take Highway 38. It's the safest route, as far as I'm concerned, and it's the route I send my mom on because I love her so much. Um, they all have their issues, but this is, for me, what I consider the safest. You guys take care, and I'll start posting or I'll get the video going in a moment. I just don't want to bore you guys with the drive through this town. All right, you guys thought I would post another little clip. It's just a beautiful backdrop here. You can't even see the top of the mountain because we're so close. But yeah, it's uh, this is this is gorgeous. Look at this. I mean, what a beautiful place. It's magical. So we got some storms coming in, guys. Monday, it said three to five inches for the past couple days, but now it looks like not even an inch. So we'll see, I'll, I'll keep you updated. I'll check while I'm on this, on, on this drive just to see what the newest update is. All right, you guys, we're still in Yukaipa. We're coming around the bend here to get to Highway 38. We're already in, up a little bit in elevation, maybe 2,000 feet or something from the, from the basin down there. So here we go. We're gonna turn right here. This is Highway 38. What a beautiful view though. Yukaipa is a really beautiful gem out here, you guys. It really is. The parts of it are just beautiful. When I was growing up, I grew up in Newport Beach and I just never thought that the Inland Empire had much to offer in terms of beauty. That, I guess, is the snobbiness from where I came from. But I was certainly wrong. Well, anyway, we're on Highway 38 now, folks. San Bernardino National Forest welcomes us. Here we go. Yeah, boy. So once again, for those of you who are nervous about driving up these mountain roads, this is the route that I suggest. Um, it keeps a good speed limit to it. There aren't as many cliffs to fall off. Um, but just like on all the other roads up this mountain, you'll get a lot of people who are impatient and driving really fast, tailgating you. I always suggest that you pull over at every pull out that you can when there's someone right on your butt, do not speed up to appease them. Do not, because that's when you're gonna be in a dangerous situation, when you're driving out of your league a bit. So just, uh, it's not a competition to see who gets up there first. It's about keeping yourself safe and making it up to Big Bear so you can have a darn good time. absolutely zero snow in the roads the whole way up here right now but we will eventually hit snow for sure but it's uh there's there's nothing in the roads so you guys have nothing nothing to be concerned about um there were a couple spots where it was a little bit damp so what that is you guys is when we get up to where the snow is during the daytime with the snow melt sometimes it, it, it melts into the street and then at nighttime, when we get our, our freezing temperatures, it'll refreeze and turn into a little bit of ice. So you, you always want to be cautious. Even though it's been 13 days since the last storm, you still want to be as cautious as possible. Um, always assume at, at nighttime, anytime you see a patch of road that looks wet, just assume that it's ice. Keep yourself as safe as possible. And this is the first time I've driven my new car down the mountain. Yeah, boy. 2023 Subaru Outback Touring XT. What's up? What's up? This thing is so beautiful. And my goodness, like compared to my Crosstrek, it's just a it's just a, a whole different game. 
This is like a complete luxury vehicle. I, I did not expect this, with all due respect to Subaru, I did not expect this from Subaru. But when I was selling real estate years ago in the Newport Beach area, um, I had a Mercedes ML 500. I bought it brand new. Um, that was a good time of my life. And and this thing even feels more, more, more luxurious than that. And the suspension on this is... I mean, it's it's top notch. Everything about this this darn vehicle is top notch. So I'm I'm super super grateful. Super grateful. Anyway, I feel like there was something I was supposed to tell you guys, but I completely forgot. Completely forgot. Oh, I just went to a place called America's Best Glasses and Contact Lenses. Um. My goodness, you can get like two two pairs of glasses with the eye exam for like $79.95. But they wanted, or they asked me if I wanted the, the anti-glare, which also comes with the anti-scratch. Uh, um, and that like, it brought it, brought it from like $79.95 to $240 <laughs> total. So I wasn't too thrilled about that. But it's okay. I still got two pairs of eyeglasses, prescription, with my astigmatism and this and that for 240 bucks. So America's best, you guys. I'm telling you. And they're gonna ship them to me. They should be at my house in about uh, 10 to 14 business days. They said. So we shall see. here is um, a runoff area when, when we get our, our big storms and big thunderstorms especially this wash over here is it, it's it's actually deadly it's proven to be deadly my my first or second year up here I was reading about some dude who took his took a girl out on their first date and they were just walking through that that wash area over here to the right and a flash flood came with no warning and they were washed away it's no joke you guys the weather is no freaking joke sorry about all the glare here This is really a beautiful drive. This is this is my favorite drive. Although I always say it's for me, I feel it's it's the least dangerous of the of the three main ones. But that's my 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 opinion. But once again, I would never send my mom up this route if I thought it was, you know, the most dangerous. Or, so love that lady a lot and I always want her to be safe I'm looking forward to us turning here because my phone's overheating because the sun's beating down on it so this town right here if you turn right I, th I think it's called Forest Falls it's amazing it's so beautiful it it feels like you're in like the Swiss Alps in there because there's such rugged mountain peaks and jagged and you're in this little tiny valley. They get a bunch of snow in there too, especially towards the top of the road there. But we are not going there. We're headed to Big Bear Lake. And this route's gonna take us through Big Bear City, and then we'll hit Big Bear Lake. So you'll, you'll basically get the whole tour today. And as I said, it's been 13 days after our snowstorm, so we can, so you can see what's going on here and make a determination whether want to come up or not because as I said I know a lot of people are terrified to take these roads and I don't blame them especially when you get people driving like bats out of hell which I was one of those people but you guys have changed me tremendously you, you guys have really calmed me down and turned me into a more respectful driver and um, it's because of constructive criticism not just people attacking me just really constructive criticism and I really appreciate that I'm, I'm so receptive to stuff like that you know if you're saying something because you care 
very receptive. So thank you guys. I don't even cuss anymore. Well, I had a slip up like on that live feed. I, I couldn't believe it. It's like the worst word you can say. But I had a slip up. And it's not like I use those words in regular everyday life all the time anyway. But um, once again, out of respect for you guys, um, I, I, I thank you for... Uh, for helping me out there because you're not cool you're not awesome if you're cursing and my first couple years every other word on this channel was the F word it just wasn't good I don't know if you can see that view at all but there aren't many views of down the mountain on this road this is one of the very few and it's, it's just it's, you can hardly even see anything What I like about this road the best is it, it makes you feel like you're in a much bigger mountain range than you really are because you're, you're kind of driving parallel with the mountains in the mountains. So it really does feel like you're in a much larger, much larger mountain range, but it's still just a little blip, a little hill. I wish we were more like the Sierra Nevadas or the Rockies or the Wasatch or the Cascades, something like that. But no, we're the San Bernardino. One thing on these roads, on this one also, especially this one and Highway 18 on the front side is there's a tendency for a lot of rock rock slides here especially when we have storms um, it dislodges a lot of the uh, sediment and whatnot and you'll uh, you can have rocks coming down on you so you just got to be super super cautious it's not the whole drive but areas like this and about halfway up the same thing very vigilant never tailgate because if the person in front of you hits a rock you're probably not going to have time to swerve swerve out of the way or even see it until it's too late that happened to me with my saturn i had a saturn up here and i i still do it, it's it, it's an l200 but i haven't driven it in about four years an l200 and i i hit a rock on this road and it cut through my transmission fluid pan and within like a minute i i couldn't even my gas pedal was, was, was not responding and I had to be towed. It, it just wasn't fun. It cost a lot of money. And seriously, there's, there's no reason to rush up here. Just, just, you know, drive a little slower and let that excitement of coming to Big Bear last a little bit longer because you're eventually going to get there. And that's if you drive safe and sound. Hope you all are doing well today. As I said, I just got done at America's Best Glasses. It's been something I've been putting off for a long time because I didn't want to have to spend any more money. Due to my car accident, I've had to cough up a lot more money. And it's, uh, it's not a happy time for me because I don't like stressing on finances. I do the best I can, but... Um, yeah, I just don't like stressing on that stuff, and I'm stressing big time on it. But it was my fault. Completely my fault. So, lesson learned. Unfortunately, it was a financial lesson. My insurance is going to skyrocket. It's my first accident I've ever been in. I don't have any tickets on my record. I don't have anything like that. Nothing. I had a perfect driving record until just over a month ago or maybe it was about a month ago and we're coming up to a town called Angeles Oaks this place sees some some pretty good snow, um, but because it's a lower elevation, the snow melts away fairly quickly, but they do see pretty good snow. And here we 
are entering Angeles Oaks. Over here to the left, there are some beautiful homes. If you turn left on this street, some gorgeous homes on the cliffside. You're not gonna be able to see anything in there, but that's where you wanna turn. And it's one of those towns that's so tiny, if you blink, you'll miss the whole thing. Speed limit's 35 through the town. Do not go any faster, you guys. Once again, San Bernardino National Forest, uh, a way that they make a lot of money is ticketing people, and it brings money to our e economy. So uh, I'm sure you don't want to spend money helping our economy like that. So... snow yet oh there's a little patch right there We're starting to get into the snow obviously it's not much yet but and as I said this stuff as it gets thicker the higher we go um, if you're driving up here during freezing temperatures like in the evening time or the early early morning times just just please be extra cautious don't think just because it hasn't snowed in three weeks that our roads will be perfect because that's not the case at all that's dangerous thinking the snow will melt during the day some of it will seep into the road and what doesn't evaporate will refreeze so you guys can, can kind of see where we're at. Let me, uh, how do I magnify it? Oh, there we go, plus. So that's what we got going on here. I don't know if I mentioned, but this route is a little bit longer than all the other routes to get up to the mountain. However, as I said, I believe it's it, it's it's safer. But it will take you longer to to come up this way. Now, if you're if you're going to like Sugarloaf, see he pulled over for us, so we turned on our hazards right there just to say thank you. You just want to be as polite as possible because it's so nice to get people who actually uh you know are considerate of other drivers up here and and follow the rules of the road which is if you are impeding traffic you pull out as soon as you can to let the faster traffic go as i said it's not a competition it's not a race your lives are so much more valuable than that beautiful just beautiful up here further you'll see some some remnants of that huge mudslide that we had um, months ago during those massive thunderstorms it shut down this whole road for like a month but yeah if you guys are staying in like Sugarloaf or Irwin Lake or Baldwin Lake this would be probably the same same distance as if you drove up the front otherwise to get to Big Bear Lake and Boulder Bay, Papoose Bay, Moon Ridge. Um, this is definitely a much longer, longer stretch. Speed limits consistently 55 through here. 
the whole way. And we do hit an elevation of 8,443 feet. So when we do have snowstorms, it can be hit and miss on, on, on this side. When it's hit, it's, it's, it's bad. A lot of snow, a lot of snow. Um, but still, less traffic, longer and straighter, less mountain, less, less cliffs to fly off. Um, yeah, just all in all safer. I don't think I'll mention that again because I've said it about 20 times already today. Once again, I hope all of you are doing well. Hope you all are staying healthy. We're getting a bunch of illness in in Big Bear. Nothing of what was going on in 2020, so you don't have to worry about that. I didn't either way. But people are, are getting the flu right now in our area. I don't know if it's because of the colder temperatures or, or or what, but a lot of people I know have had colds and a little bit of a sickness and they've gotten over it already. So be aware when you come up to Big Bear. And I'm a little bit bummed out that I had to take this car down the mountain today because I've got my snow tires on here and I and I just as little as I can drive on dry pavement that's how I want to treat it I've been driving my wife's car a lot it's just because I don't want to screw up these tires but she had to go to work today and I had to go get my glasses couldn't believe it though literally like 89.95 if you don't want the, the anti-glare and the anti-scratch stuff because when you order when you agree to the anti-glare it, it it comes with the anti-scratch surface as well so uh but it's like it costs you like two times what it does just for the two pairs of eyeglasses plus the exam i could have walked out of there for 89.95 today but i walked out for 240 they convinced me right after I'm like get getting all my credit cards paid off something else so <laughs> it's just a pain in the butt and as you all know I I bought this new car because I didn't feel like I have a choice because I have OCD so bad you guys it's self-diagnosed I don't have any rituals involved with it but I have really bad OCD and I've never missed one storm since I've lived here and I didn't want to start now so I, I did what I could and I think I was a little bit impulsive on getting the nicest Subaru they have out of the Outback Forester family like the nicest so I'm stressed out each month because they're massive car car payments but I don't have my first one until December 15th so I'll have been able to drive the car for a month and a half without making any payments but I've I've been saving for that already it just sucks but when you're an idiot and crash into the back of somebody, you know, you gotta pay. And I'm paying. And not only am I paying, I'm starving right now. I am so hungry. I should have eaten while I was down there because so many more options down the mountain. I just wanted to get back home because I have work. Oh man, I don't like seeing the squirrels in the road like that. That's sad. I'm a big time animal person. I get more upset seeing hurt animals than I do hurt people. Here's where a big 
portion of the mudslide came down through. I don't know if you guys can, can tell right there, but right through there and through here and fires through here. Yeah. And there's other areas too on this road where it got smashed. I'll try to point them out if we don't just blow right by them. As you can see, the snow is increasing on the sides here. And then you can see what I'm talking about, the snow on the sides of the road here. Um, right now it's 55 degrees, so of course snow is melting. Um, and you will get spots where it will puddle up in the road, even though it hasn't snowed for two weeks, you guys. But it can still turn into some serious ice at nighttime, so just, I can't stress that enough. Be extra vigilant, please. And on Monday, as I said, we have a potential of three to five inches of snow coming. Um, that's what they've been saying the past couple days, but it looks like it's changed as of this morning to uh, less than an inch of snow. And then we were supposed to get some snow on like Wednesday night as well, and that doesn't look like it's gonna happen, but it's these things change so rapidly up here. These forecasts change all the time up here. I mean, literally every hour, because I check obsessively, and it'll it'll change every hour. To snow, to no snow, to more snow, to more than they thought, to less than they thought, to back to no snow. Like it's a, even within just a few days of the storms. So thankfully, I am OCD once again, self-diagnosed that uh, that I am like that because it it keeps me really up to date. And then I have a lot of you who, who are super helpful, who are always letting me know what's coming in, what to expect. So I really appreciate you guys. Thank you, thank you, thank you. right there we just crossed over it it'll be more in the evening time and then it'll freeze I'm gonna zoom out of this map real quickly just so you guys can, can, can kind of get a bigger or a more overall view That's us, this little arrow right here. So as I said, we like drive parallel to, to the mountain. So it really feels like there's a lot more mountain range up here than there really is, but it's not. If there was a road that went straight up and down the mountain, it would take you less, probably about 45 minutes at the most. Not even that long, especially if the speed limit's 55, it'd take you 20 minutes to get through our whole mountain range. Because you consider the Cajon Pass, when there's no traffic, 20 minutes, maybe. And that's going from one side of the mountain range to the other. Driving right through it. So peaceful. 
I know with me running my mouth, it's not as peaceful. Not even close. But that's just me, guys. I'm a mouth runner. Wow, this vehicle just charges. I'm telling you, this thing is bad ace. It's got a turbo engine. It's got a turbo in the engine, on the engine, whatever you want to say. It's just, and it's super smooth. As I said, it's, it's night and day difference from my cross track. And I'll be getting that back in a, hopefully a couple weeks from it being repaired. It was $7,000 in damage. Can you believe that? $7,000. That would pay my rent for a year. I'm very lucky. I have a very cheap rent because I moved here almost eight eight years ago, and uh, yeah, I got super lucky. For a two-story place, it's small, but for a little two-story place. 550 a month you guys <laughs> yes it's it's thievery I stole I'm a thief I got such a great rate but now with all the Airbnb stuff and just nothing but investment properties up there um, there's a lot of demand and no supply and therefore they're jacking the prices and I mean jacking the prices I know if I move out of my place, they'll probably try to charge $1,500 a month for it instead of $550. That's how much things are changing up here. But I foresee a major crash in this area. I hope not because a lot of people work their butts off to be able to purchase investment properties. And I don't see any problem with it. I mean, yeah, I guess the biggest complaint is that there are no neighbors, so it's not as safe. And lots of squatting up here, especially in the summertime. But uh, yeah, I'm, I'm 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 super receptive to people who have worked really hard, sacrificed a lot, didn't go and party on the weekends, just just worked hard and are diligent making money, and they purchase investment properties and rent them out to earn little extra income I think that's a beautiful thing there's a lot of people up here who really hate on that but none of them who hate on it have investment properties themselves none of them who hate on it uh, stayed home on the weekends probably and studied and busted their asses so I'm I'm, I'm just someone who really appreciates hard work and putting in a strong effort in life and not living the victim role and blaming er er everyone else for sorry guys I I uh, used an expletive with my hands for that person who almost head on collided with us you guys see that did you see that oh my goodness I know two wrongs don't make a right I'm, I'm still growing you guys I'm still growing but yeah I'll leave the Airbnb thing alone. It's just, as I said, uh, I've, I've, I appreciate people who want more out of life, who work really hard, realizing that you only get one shot at this thing. And uh, to live as a victim is just a miserable, a miserable place to be. I used to live as a victim and hate on people who made money and this and that. But um, I, I, I just that, that was a learned behavior living here in California. I was born and raised here. Um, I think everyone should work really, really hard and, and strive for greatness because you all can do it. We all can do it. We all can do it. We just have to want to put in that effort in life. And if you don't want to put in the effort and just coast, that's totally fine too. But don't complain about people who have worked really hard to better themselves and say it's not fair life's not fair and I'm not there I don't 
have all that extra money to have an investment property and like and earn extra income on the side and stuff no but I appreciate people who do because it shows me that it is possible and it's a lot of people out there who bust their tails so good on you guys and uh, hopefully someday I'll see you in that same position I'll be there someday hopefully because I do want to give my wife the best life possible I want to give myself the best life possible struggling sucks you guys like like living paycheck to paycheck sucks like that's no way to live doing the same thing over and over again expecting a different result was that's the definition of insanity and I, I just that's how I've lived for so long um, and yet always complained about the position I was in and then once I realized that I was the problem and not not other people who chose to work hard and chose to take sacrifices in life. It's, it's, it's not their fault that I was such a just simpleton and not willing to do much more. That's, that's all me. And as I said, it, it's not for everybody. But I've gotten to a point where I don't complain about wealthy people anymore. Um, I'd actually rather be in that spot just have a lot more options in this short life especially being married now like man I want to take take my wife traveling and, and, and doing so many awesome things but right now I there's there's just no way and especially because I crashed my car and had to get a new car there's just no way like and her car engine blew up so so I was trying to find a new car anyway um, so she, so she could drive my other Subaru so so she has something to drive and like yeah and then I crashed the darn thing so I don't know I believe you should strive for greatness that's all because each and every single one of you are so worth it life is miserable <laughs> it really is and to just find any light at the end of the tunnel any joy any hope for something better that's a wonderful thing summit already so right up here on the right is where there's a big I don't know it wasn't right there I don't think I think it's coming right up though a police academy area where I can't remember what time of year but there's a ton of police recruits that go to this little area up here on the right and they do their training and stuff like that I think it's not on Bishop Ranch right there maybe it is but it's it's in this area here on the right hand side. I think you turn right here. Yeah. Oh no, that's a pull out, so that would not be good. This mountain has so much to offer, you guys. Just it's just so much, so much beauty and so much peace and serenity. Sometimes I have a hard time finding it though because I'm so in my head all the time so so depressed about things always um yeah i'm doing a lot better but still I, I'm, I'm i'm still super bummed out about things in life and, um, and i've realized that everything that i think about always comes about everything and it's it's like always negative sad poor me feelings and then i'm wondering why those 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 feelings and that reality is always with me so it's the law of attraction, right? So if I'm manifesting all of this negativity into my life and these negative feelings by constantly feeling them, then why can't I at least fake it till I make it and start really thinking about positive things and feeling them though, feeling successful, feeling like I've won, feeling like I do have a great life already and that it's just going to keep on getting better, feeling like I'm, I'm about to go on a major vacation just that feeling in your stomach and just trying to live like that because once again since I'm always 
feeling negativity and sadness and hurt and depression. I, I, I mean, no wonder why it's always in my life every second of every day. You guys are the only thing that take me out of that. Without you guys, I don't know where I would be. You guys have saved my life. Like, that's there's no hyperbole there. You guys have saved my life. I struggle a lot. I don't know what I'd do without you guys. The love you show me through through the comments is, is it, it works wonders. As I said, it, you have saved my life. All right, we're at Onyx Summit now, guys. Elevation 8,443 feet once we get to the top of this little hill here. The sign keeps on getting knocked down, which is a disappointment. It's usually sitting right here on the left. But anyway, we're starting to head into the Big Bear Valley, you guys. Heading down now. We are at the highest point of any road in the San Bernardino National Forest in terms of main roads highways stuff like that and when I get home I am gonna eat me some food I'm gonna have some top ramen I have to be so careful spending money I cannot miss a car payment I, I cannot miss one of these car payments I said it, it sucks struggling like that. I didn't have to get the nicest Subaru. It was an impulsive choice. And yeah, I love it. It's freaking amazing. But I don't think it was this, the brightest thing for me to do that. To put myself under even more undue stress. You guys, three nights ago, I was in the emergency room. My blood pressure was like 211 over 109. And the doctor told me he doesn't know how I even walked in there. I'm stressing a lot. I'm so, I'm, so now they have me on high, high blood pressure medication called lisinopril. Um, yeah, I, 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 I beat up on myself so much, you guys. And one of these days, I'm not going to get another chance. High blood pressure and hypertension is known as the silent killer, I guess. I mean... If, I'm, if I ever don't make a video, you guys, when we have storms, then you know something's seriously wrong. Seriously wrong. Because I will always make and create for you guys. I love doing this. Obviously, this isn't a storm, but it was an opportunity for you guys to see what it's like driving up, especially the way that I suggest you drive up for the safest possible journey. And what we're looking at over there to the right, that is the, the high desert area. Just so beautiful. The view is not as magnificent in terms of altitude from out here, from this side of the mountain range, because at the bottom where it's desert right there, it, it, it's already at about 3,000 feet elevation. So it's not a significant jump when you're looking down. Unlike the front side. The front side, I think Highland is maybe like 1,000 feet up at the base of the mountain. So you're still looking down about 5,000 feet. But over here, you're only looking down maybe, I don't know, 3,500 feet when you're on the back of, of Highway 18, maybe 4,000 feet. But it is it is significantly greater on, on the front side. That's why I, I, I like the front side. But if you guys want the safest route up here, um, like the absolute safest and, and the fastest, it would be Highway 18 on the backside, but I know none of you want to drive through the Cajon Pass to Bear Valley Road, take that for 20 miles, and then dead end at Highway 18 and, and, and take that through the darn desert and then get to the mountains. It's just a nightmare. So that's why I suggest this is the safest route because most of you are coming up from the front side. But technically, um, I can get from the Mitsubishi plant to the top of Highway 18 in nine minutes on the back out here. Nine minutes from the desert to the top. And if you're just cruising without any traffic, it, it, it'll take you maybe 14 minutes. 
it's not a long journey. And the backside on Highway 18 hardly gets any snow, you guys, compared to the rest of the mountain. So even if, let's say we have like a foot of snow at the Big Bear Dam, you, you might have like an inch of snow out there. It's that drastic of a difference. Um, there's one part of that road, it's a triple switchback, which can be kind of rough if it's icy. Actually can be very rough if it's icy. But that's the only part of that road that is a nightmare sometimes. Otherwise, it's just an easy breezy cover girl, you know? <laughs> I love you guys, man. It's crazy when I hit this record button, I really feel like you guys are here with me. And I couldn't be more proud to know most of you. Well, obviously, I don't know most of you, but I know an awful lot of you now after doing this for just about eight years. Some darn good people on this channel. And I am so unbelievably blessed to have you guys in my life. Unbelievably blessed. about to enter Big Bear City and there's a 7,000 foot elevation sign we're about to pass on the right hand side I don't know if it's still there or not we shall see yep there she blows there she blows on the left and right 7,000 feet elevation the city limit sign should be coming up unless someone ran that over I don't see it. Speaking of running things over, that roundabout, um, that first little snowstorm that we had that gave us like four or five inches, like two or three signs were already knocked down. <laughs> I'm really interested to see how this how this works out. That roundabout, I think it's it's going to cause more havoc. To be honest, it's beautiful what they've done, and typically roundabouts are supposed to east traffic congestion and, and, and whatnot and obviously they they have engineers behind those things so i'm 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 hoping that it does work out because i'm not as smart as an engineer it's just common sense from 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 what i see would lead me to believe that it's going to be more of a nightmare than a contributing factor to safe and better driving especially because they have a lot of the directions for the roundabout painted on the ground so what do they do when there's snow on the ground how are how are you guys going to see kind of funny kind of funny okay if you turn left here you'll get into sugarloaf you guys we just passed Irwin on the right but yeah you'll get into sugarloaf if you turn left there on baldwin and montclair it's a really nice mobile home park. Trailer park. Really nice though. Really, really nice. They've got some beautiful trailers in there. Wow, we made it up here in no time, you guys. This screen is humongous, it's awesome. But anyway, we're back in the Big Bear area. As I said, we're gonna go all the way to Big Bear Lake on video here, just so you guys can, can really get a sense of the amount of time it takes to come up Highway 38. Minus a couple minutes, because we did a, little, a couple clips in Yukaipa. But yeah, 
right here where you, you come up to Big Bear Boulevard. Um, if you make a right, you go into a little area of town called Baldwin Lake. And Baldwin's beautiful. But if, if you like the snow, that's not the part of town you want to be. Once again, that, that area, especially the furthest part of Baldwin, you get a foot of snow at the Big Bear Dam and maybe an inch or two over there. Maybe. I've seen good storms where my whole area is just inundated with snow, just a huge blanket of snow, and then you come over here and there's just hardly anything. If brown dirt spots everywhere. This is another way into Sugarloaf, you guys, Maple. So if you passed Baldwin and you get to Big Bear Boulevard, you can still turn left on Maple and it takes you up to Sugarloaf. I know a few of you have wanted me to take a trip through Sugarloaf and I was going to on the last storm. I can't remember. Oh yeah, it was the power outage that kept me from, from going up there. I wanted you guys to be able to see a little bit and it was evening time when I was going to go up there. So obviously evening time sucks when I'm trying to show you guys new things but The chopper, there's the chopper. You see the chopper? Wow, the other ones. Wow, <laughs> it was a tumor. All right, Arnold, calm down, okay? I told you you could come along if you didn't talk. Wow. This part of the boulevard, this little stretch that goes about 200, 300, no, about 400 yards. The speed limit drops from 40 to 30. You'll have officers sitting right there. As I said, it's a it's it's a big way for us to, to, to make money up here and to stimulate our economy, <laughs> is to give people tickets. And DUIs are a big thing up here, you guys. I haven't had a drink in nine and a half years. And I'm lucky I never got a DUI. And I'm lucky I never hurt anybody. But I'm telling you, do not come up here and drink and drive. I mean, you should never drink and drive anywhere, obviously. But in a little town like like this, it's uh, um, they'll get you. I'm not kidding. They will get you. Just stay safe and uh, don't waste all that money on a DUI and don't risk your life. Or others. Circle, hey, hey, buddy.
So once we cross Division Road, we'll be just about entering Big Bear Lake. And I'm gonna shut this off at Moon Ridge, okay guys? Thanks for cruising with me, you all, for the, for the one or two of you that stayed the whole trip. <laughs> I appreciate that. Um, hope you got to see some beauty today. Um, see what it looks like driving up here. See how, how safe it is. Uh, the roads are in spectacular condition. Uh, thank you to the, the maintenance people who do all the, uh, like, like Caltrans, who do all the snow removal and stuff like that, snow plowing. Um, you guys do a great job. Thank you for keeping us all safe. Just please don't pile it up as high in front of my driveway anymore. <laughs> Here's a snow play area for the kids. You can go sledding and it's got a conveyor belt that you stand on and it pulls you up to the top so you don't have to exercise at all or waste any energy. And you can just sled, 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 sled without getting tired. It's pretty cool. It's worth the money. I'm not sure what, what they charge, but just for that to pull you up to the top, it's worth it. It is worth it. Once again, I always point out that little neighborhood over there. I think it's, the streets are called Bear Loop. That's the main street, but I don't know what that neighborhood's called. Maybe it's called Bear Loop as well, but that's my favorite neighborhood up here just because it just feels like a little house on the prairie type of an area. It's just so beautiful, so beautiful. never pull over on this side to go sledding up here you guys um, it's crazy once one person pulls over everybody pulls over and takes takes their their kids sledding right there and while while you're sledding you will get a ticket I guarantee you I've seen it so much so you don't want to you don't want to get a ticket you guys and there are a few spots that I always suggest that you guys go to for for the folks who want free sledding and if you ever have any question about that just Ask me in the comments and I will respond to you. Because I know free is better. <laughs> always, free is always better. We're in Big Bear Lake now, technically. I mean, not in the lake, obviously, but we're in the, the, the city of Big Bear Lake. I need to get this bad boy washed. Spam. Not answering that one. Not answering that one. No. Look at this view of Snow Summit. I love coming around that corner right there. That is so beautiful. Especially at nighttime when all the lights are on the mountain. Oh my gosh. It's just magnificent. Stater Brothers. Super packed right now. That, that Stater Brothers parking lot. Just ridiculous. Everyone last minute shopping for Thanksgiving. Same over here with Bonds. So if you, if you guys are coming up here today... If, if you see this video, I would do all your shopping down the hill. It's going to be just as rough down there too, I'm sure. But at least you have a lot more options. What a beautiful day. Temperature up here in Big Bear right now. You guys, look at that. 54 degrees. Isn't that lovely? That's, it's very nice. We are just about home. Just about home. I'm super, super stoked to be back. Every time I go down the mountain, it 
kicks in my depression a bit. And then as soon as I get to about 4,000 feet elevation coming back, it's, it, it's like a feeling that I'm driving into heaven. It's a, it's a beautiful feeling. There's a lot of people up here right now for the holiday. For those of you who are coming up or who already are here, I hope you have a wonderful time. Hope you have a beautiful Thanksgiving with your family and friends and all just all the loved ones who you're spending time with. Be safe up here. Obviously, you guys know if you have any questions about anything, I'll do my best to answer them because I want you guys to have a great time while you're here. We're turning left to get to Moon Ridge Road without going on Moon Ridge Road. This is called Moon Ridge Way. You don't have to wait at the stoplight like you do up here. You just turn left here. It's in between Walgreens and Captain's Anchorage Restaurant. And then you'll come up to this stop sign, which is Moon Ridge Road. You know, just a few, few little tricks of the trade up here. Save you 30 seconds. But a bunch of those little 30 second saves add up. Now this is the uh, one of the satellite parking lots for Snow Summit and it is completely full. It just wouldn't be fun for me personally to be up there today. That would be miserable. There's gonna be so many people not enough runs it just would not be fun all right here we go we got a we got a turbo here all right guys you guys take care thanks again for watching november 23rd 2022 hope you enjoyed the ride on highway 38 up to big bear peace out you guys